Veganism starts to become a distinct movement in the United States in 1948, which is when the first vegan uh, organization is, is founded in the United States. Welcome back to our noble lineage and our three-part feature on American vegetarianism, tracing a venerable history with Adam Sprinson. Now let's continue our journey through the last part of this chapter of brave pursuance in American history. As the ambitious and hardworking immigrants to the New World settled in and prospered, they sought convenience and comfort. Eateries, including vegetarian restaurants, began opening to cater these needs. Uh, but by the 1890s, we see the first cluster of vegetarian restaurants pop up, first in New York City with the somewhat predictably named Vegetarian Restaurant Number 1. This was a big event for vegetarians that was celebrated in their publications, and the large vegetarian organization in New York at the time held a meeting there uh, to celebrate its opening. Mm -hmm. But then Chicago actually becomes a center of vegetarian restaurants uh, by 1895. And all the way into the, the opening years of the 20th century, Chicago becomes a hotbed of sort of vegetarian businesses and restaurants for people to get not only a nutritious vegetarian meal, but also a rather cheap vegetarian meal. And that has a mass appeal to both vegetarians and non-vegetarians alike. As it was and is still one of the most populated metropolitans in the United States, Chicago's rise in vegetarianism in the late 1800s is a symbolic and poignant stance against the meat industry and its early effects on the environment. Part of the reason that Chicago becomes a center of vegetarian activity by the 1890s is precisely and ironically because it's the center of the meatpacking industry in the United States. So that Chicagoans, even those not living uh, on the south side in Packingtown are, hi are highly affected by the environmental uh, consequences of this large meatpacking industry that, you know, that uh, leads to a stench that's reported, that people can smell this stench coming from Packingtown all the way in the loop. Mm -hmm. And that there's a real sense that this isn't a good thing. And uh, that's part of the reason that Chicago itself becomes a center of vegetarian activities, because it's opposing sort of Chicago's place as a meat-centric center. Judging by their successful ventures, early vegetarian businesses also appealed to non-vegetarians. Uh, name some of the restaurants that existed in Chicago. One of the more po popular ones was a, uh, a restaurant named the Pure Food Cafe uh, that opened up, I believe, in 1900, remained uh, open in Chicago until the 1920s. This was located in the Loop on Michigan Boulevard, eventually Michigan Avenue. Part of the growing business mm -hmm. uh, center of Chicago, so these vegetarian cafes and restaurants are an attractive lunch option for uh, individuals working in the city. It's cheap, it's fast, and it's healthy. Um, there are also vegetarian bakeries and grocery stores. There's a bakery called Burhalters that is very popular that's uh, located across from today where Second City is in Old Town. So Burhalters Burl sells uh, olives and whole wheat bread and other vegetarian uh, products, and not only that, but also starts shipping them throughout the United States. Today, the availability of vegetarian restaurants, meat-free products, recipe books, and the wealth of information on the internet has made adopting the plant-based diet effortless in the United States and elsewhere. Coupled with the reality of our planet's current delicate condition, the plant-based diet is becoming more paramount than ever. Overwhelming is the evidence that directly links animal agriculture to the greatest crisis that has ever faced our planet, climate change. The United States has an ingrained penchant for truth-seeking, and perhaps this is why throughout its history there has been a persistent interest in vegetarianism. On all counts, the plant-based diet can only be beneficial to one and all. Built on ideals of freedom and liberty, the spiritual rivers of the United States run deep. As Americans contemplate what is really important in life, their compassionate awakening will be complete. Most of those involved in the writing of this nation's constitution did not eat animals, which perhaps gives us reason to ponder its words with a deeper meaning to consider what really is meant by injustice for all. 
the ways in which people ate uh, says a lot about a, a society. Vegetarians throughout their history during this time period are involved in utilizing the diet as a way to advocate for uh, greater change within society. If an individual was healthy, they were able to make better choices. Uh, and that if an individual was healthy, that they were able to help somebody else mm -hmm. much easier than they were if they were, say, sick or involved in their own uh, sort of problems. And many of those problems, of course, they argued, came from the fact that they were, that they were eating meat. Uh, so the, the story of vegetarianism during this time period, is a, it is a story of a dietary choice, but it is also a story of larger political activism. And one of my hopes with my research is that vegetarianism during this time period uh, gets its, its due for the changes that it did work for in the 19th century. It's part of the story of American history. For more information about Mr. Adam Spritzen and his Archimedean lever of vegetarian history, recipes, and ephemera, please visit vegetarianhistory.com. Thank you, Mr. Adam Spritzen, for preserving this honored cornerstone of United States history with your research and writing. We wish you much success in your studies and endeavors to promote vegetarianism. Respected viewers, we appreciate you joining us today on our noble lineage. Coming up now is Between Master and Disciples here on Supreme Master Television. May your new week be graced with bright aspirations and kind company. For more details, please see www.suprememastertv.com forward slash NL.